I am Sami, your devoted manga otaku, and welcome to my manga space. Today, I will be hauling and unboxing books for the month of June. Originally, this haul was going to be me opening the manga I bought in my $500 shopping spree video, but I'm going on a two-week vacation at the end of June, so I'm planning to film it when I get back in July. The manga that I'm opening in today's video <laughs> is mostly pre-orders with a couple newbies thrown in here and there. As per the norm, the first part of this video is dedicated to unboxing all the manga, and the second part of this video will be me discussing the books in a little more detail. These videos are usually on the longer side, but I have included lots of time steps, so feel free to jump around. Before we dive into the haul, I feel like I haven't welcomed anyone to my manga space in a while, so if you're new here, hello, I'm Sammy, and I like discussing, reading, and collecting manga. On my channel, you'll find manga hauls, uh, manga wrap-ups, which are essentially mini manga reviews, and any other content that I feel like making. I'm very thankful for your support, and if you're ever interested in discussing or recommending manga, feel free to leave comments on my videos. I might take a little bit to reply, but I do my best to respond to all the comments. I have been waiting so long to open some of these packages, especially the pre-orders, so I invite you to grab a coffee or other beverage of your choice and let's unbox the manga!
I hope you all enjoyed the unboxing portion of this video and without skipping a beat, let's haul some manga. There's a lot of manga in this haul that I'm very eager to read, but if I had to pick the one I was most excited for, it would probably be Volume 6 of the shoujo series Living Room Matsunaga-san by Keiko Iwashita. This Kodansha publication is a coming-of-age, slice-of-life, age-gap romance story and it's rated 16 plus. I read volumes one through five of this series in January and I have been waiting so patiently for the next installment. And it's so beautiful. I am a little bummed that there is some damage with this volume. There is tearing in the corner. Uh, there is a scuff right here on the edge of the spine. And then it also has a dent here and now that I'm looking there's another dent here which really sucks but uh, those little types of imperfections in my opinion it's not worth sending the book back but nonetheless I am very excited to read this <laughs> I have a non-spoiler deep dive review of the first five volumes of Living Room Matsunaga-san on my channel if you're interested in more information, but essentially this manga is about a 17 year old girl named Miko who's living in her uncle's boarding house with five other tenants, all of which are adults. The story is about Miko discovering her independence, realizing that adults are just normal people with faults and insecurities, and lastly, learning how to coexist with someone whom she has romantic feelings for. If you are unsure of picking this series up because of the age gap, I recommend checking out my review because I go into more detail about how I think this manga is different from your typical age gap story. I recently found out that this series will be ending at 11 volumes and it feels bittersweet hearing that news. On the one hand, stories like this are better off ending when they're supposed to. You don't want to risk having the narrative become boring because it's being dragged out too long. But on the other hand, I don't want Living Room Matsunaga-san to end. I love it so much. I guess all good things must come to an end, but the important part is enjoying the ride. And let me tell you, <laughs> I am enjoying the ride. <laughs> Up next, we have Volume 2 of A Sign of Affection by Sumo Ishita. This shoujo romance is rated 16 plus and is still ongoing with the next volume set to release July 20th. This Kodansha publication has become an instant favorite among a bunch of the manga community. It follows a young woman in her first year of college. Despite being born deaf, Yuki leads a fairly normal life and has learned to communicate with others through her cell phone, Japanese sign language, and by reading lips. One day, Yuki has a hard time understanding a foreigner trying to ask for directions on the train. Thankfully, Itsuomi, a guy from her college, steps in and is able to help the situation. Itsuomi and Yuki's differences in life and language draw them together. Yuki is somewhat sheltered, but Itsuomi is well-traveled and trilingual, with a showed interest in trying to learn to communicate with Yuki. Volume 1 of this manga was superb. A perfect introduction to the characters and the story. Not only was it cute and entertaining, but I felt like I was learning something while reading it. Morishita Sensei has taken special care representing the deaf community and it really shows. I'm very excited to read this volume and watch the romance between our main characters blossom. This next manga is one of two manga that were cancelled from an indigo order I hauled last month. I didn't find out that these manga were removed from my order until the unboxing, so I ordered them ASAP so I could close the gap between those series. 
The first one is volume two of the Viz Media publication, Dinjeki Daisy by Kyosuke Motomi. This is a rom-com shoujo story and it's rated 16 plus. I have talked about this on my channel quite a bit recently, so I'm going to read the short synopsis on Right Stuff. After orphan Teru, Kurodayashi, I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly, <laughs> loses her beloved older brother, she finds solace in the messages she exchanges with Daisy, an enigmatic figure who can only be reached through a cell phone her brother left her. Meanwhile, mysterious Tasuku Kurosaki always seems to be around whenever Teru needs help. Could Daisy be a lot closer than Teru thinks? Maybe. Now that this volume has come in, I have volumes 1 through 7. I'm still waiting on the rest of the series from Right Stuff. Hopefully it'll ship out soon, but I wouldn't be surprised if it took six months because of the lack of manga being printed right now. <laughs> I am really excited to read this. It is by the same mangaka as QQ Sweeper and Queen's Quality. And I'm very excited to read Queen's Quality as well. This mangaka is turning out to be a favorite of mine. <laughs> the second manga I had to reorder is Volume 3 of the ongoing series Love Me, Love Me Not by Ayo Sakisaka. Published by Viz Media, this shoujo story is a drama, romance, school life series, and it's rated 13+. It's about two high schoolers, Yuna and Akari, who form a fast friendship after learning that they live in the same apartment building. The girls are complete opposites. Yuna is an idealist while Akari is a realist. When Akari starts to fall for Yuna's childhood best friend and Yuna starts to swoon for Akira's brother, how will the girls' approach to their love lives differ? I have been wanting to read this series since last month, but now that I finally closed the gap, my new problem is that I am pressed for time. I am bringing some manga on my vacation, but I don't think I'll pack this series because it's just too long to travel with, so I might have to table this for July. However, if I time it right, on July 6th, I can order the ninth volume and have it home by the time I get back from my trip. And then I have nine manga to read instead of eight. Up next, we have a Jose series that I'm obsessed with and I'm thrilled to be hauling the newest installment, Volume 6 of Something's Wrong With Us by Natsumi Endo. This mystery romance manga is published by Kodansha Comics and is rated 16 plus. It's best to go into this series blind because it's a mystery story, so I'll just give a brief summary. This story follows Nao, a 21 year old woman who is an accomplished traditional Japanese confections maker. Her goal? to infiltrate a world-class confectionery company, get close to the heir of said company who framed her mother for murder over a decade ago, and find out what truly happened all those years ago. You know, just typical manga stuff. <laughs> Ando Sensei has been consistently throwing cliffhangers at the end of each volume in this series, and volume 5 was no exception. I cannot wait to find out what happens next. The volumes just keep getting crazier and crazier. So a little fact about me. I actually went to university to become a sex therapist, like Otis's mom from Sex Education. I can explain. This is my mom's office and she's a therapist. She's a sex therapist. I don't know what that is. Obviously, I didn't finish university, nor did I become a sex therapist but I love TV shows and movies with the theme of teaching and educating people about sex. So when I heard about this manga, I absolutely had to snatch it up. And that's volume one of Sex Education 120% story by Kiki Ki Tataki and art by Hotomura. This Yen Press publication is a comedy school life story it's rated 17 plus, and I think it's a Saiyan. 
I think. <laughs> so this narrative follows a gym teacher from an all-girls high school named Suji Sensei and she has one goal to improve Japan's terrible modern sex education standards with Suji Sensei's students barely knowing their birds from their bees. She has her work cut out for her. <laughs> I love seeing all of the positive reviews for this first volume. People have been praising it for its wholesome content, factual information about sex education and its inclusion of sex ed for LGBTQIA plus people. This series is supposed to take a comedic approach to sex education, making it less awkward to talk about and discuss. I think that this is going to be a real fun one. <laughs> this next volume is part of a series I just started this month. I finished the first four volumes and I'm so thankful to be hauling this next installment because I need to know what happens next. And that's volume five of the Shonen series Spy Family by Tetsuya, Tetsuya Endo. This comedy action series is published by Viz Media and is rated 14 plus. I've talked about this series in my last few videos, but to sum up the story, this is about a spy whose next mission requires him to obtain a family. Little does he know that the daughter he's adopted is a telepath and his new bride is an assassin. <laughs> Will these individuals be able to keep their secrets while learning what it means to become a family? I don't want to say too much about this because I'm going to be talking about it more in my joint June-July wrap-up video. If you're interested in knowing some of my thoughts on this series, I recently released a first impressions blurb on my Instagram. I am definitely adding this to my vacation TBR. I cannot wait to dive into this first fifth, into this fifth volume. <laughs> We're about halfway done this haul. I just want to say that it's currently almost three o'clock in the morning. So if I sound a little bleh, or I look a little bleh, that's why. It's also why I'm not drinking coffee because I'm going to go to sleep right after filming this. I wanted to film this before I left on vacation and this was the only time available in my schedule so let's go on to the next manga shall we? <laughs> Up next we have a series that I have been regularly hauling over the past few months and today I'm adding a whole bunch of volumes. I will put a little blurb on the screen uh, saying how many volumes I hauled today, but these are the Dragon Ball 3-in-1 editions by Akira Toriyama. I think my hubby and I are at the tail end of collecting these manga. We're only missing a few more volumes and they've all been ordered, so they'll probably be here soon. <laughs> I was brainstorming which series I could introduce to my husband after he's finished Dragon Ball and he's really showed an interest in reading Moriarty the Patriot. If you've read Moriarty the Patriot, could you let me know in the comment section below if it's a series you'd recommend? My husband and I loved the Benadryl Cucumber Patch Sherlock Holmes TV series, so I think it's something we would enjoy. Another pre-order I have been dying to get my hands on is... Volume 6 of the series Sweat and Soap by Yamada Kintetsu? Kintetsu? Yes. <laughs> this romance slice of life seinen is published by Kodensha Comics and is rated 16 plus. The narrative follows Asako, a young woman who works for her favorite toiletry company Lilia Drop. Asako loves Lilia Drop's products because they help keep her biggest secret. She has problems with body odor and perspiration, so when the company's lead product developer, a perfuming genius, approaches her in the Lilia Drop lobby, asking to study her scent, she's dumbfounded. <laughs> Although the idea of being sniffed is embarrassing, Asako wants to help the man responsible for creating the soaps she loves. 
Could this innocent sniffing work up a sweat? If you're interested in more information or my thoughts on this series, I have a non-spoiler deep dive review of the first five volumes on my channel. Basically, if you're looking for a healthy, loving adult romance, look no further. Sweat and Soap has it all, and it even showcases some very tasteful, spicy scenes. I'm looking forward to finding out where volume six takes our adorable couple. This next manga is the finale of a series that I hauled in my recent Write Stuff haul video, and that's volume three of I Hear the Sunspot Limit by Yuki Fumio. Fumino. This series is a sequel to Fumino Sensei's earlier I Hear the Sunspot and I Hear the Sunspot Theory of Happiness. It's a romance, drama, slice of life manga. It's published by One Piece Books and it's rated 16 plus. The story revolves around Kohei, a college student who lives with hearing loss and spends most of his time by himself because he's misunderstood by his peers. That is until he meets Taichi, another student at the same college who is charismatic, friendly and cheerful. Essentially, the narrative follows, follows these young men and their thriving friendship, which might just grow into something less platonic. <laughs> I recently read that Fumino Sensei does a really good job of fleshing out the characters as individuals, as well as develop the friendship before building on the romance. I have heard so many good things about this and I am a sucker for these slice of life stories. I can't wait to binge the whole series. The second last manga in this haul is volume 5 of the seinen rom-com The Way of the Hus Husband by Kyos Kyosuki Uno. Uno? I butchered that. I'm almost positive I butchered that. <laughs> This series is published by Viz Media and is rated 16 plus. This episodic slice of life manga follows Tatsu, an infamous and feared Yakuza boss nicknamed the Immortal Dragon, who retires from crime to become a house husband. Tatsu applies the skills and intensity he retained from being a crime lord to his household chores and domestic tasks as a house husband. <laughs> this is definitely the funniest manga I own. I haven't read the fourth volume yet, but volumes one through three had me laughing so hard my stomach hurt. The ridiculousness of the short stories combined with the facial expressions and actions of the characters are just chef's Yes. I think I'm going to add both volumes 4 and 5 to my vacation TBR because the story is so feel good and it's so fun and it's an absolute joy to read. The last volume I'm hauling today is one that I have been waiting to read since before it was released because the premise sounded so interesting to me. And that's volume one of the Square Enix publication, I Think Our Son Is Gay by Okura. I'm not entirely sure what demographic this is, but I saw somewhere that it is a shonen. It's a slice of life comedy story and it's rated 13 plus. This manga follows the Ao Aoyamas pretty sure I did not pronounce that properly, but they are a family consisting of dad, Akiyoshi, who's usually away for work, doting mother, Tomoko, and their two sons, Hir Hiroki and Yuri. Now that Hiroki is in his first year of high school, Tomoko is noticing that he has these little quirks, which leads her to believe that he might be gay. Being a supportive mom, Tamako decides to keep her theory to herself until Hiroki is comfortable enough to tell her his feelings. I didn't show off the art with this in my unboxing video, so I'm going to show off a little bit of it now. It looks 
so cute. I love it. It's so sweet. I'm so excited to read this. This manga sounds so freaking heartwarming. I can't even begin to describe how excited I am to read this. I think this narrative is told from the perspective of mom Tomiko. And being a mom myself, I love that. From the synopsis, she sounds like a wonderful and encouraging mother and I can't wait to dive into this family friendly comedy. And that friends is the end of my June manga unboxing and haul video. What pre-orders have you hauled recently or what pre-orders are you most excited for? You should let me know in the comment section below. If you're interested in watching more videos from me, you can check out my end card where I'll have links to my most recent videos. I hope you all have a magnificent day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!